Good evening, YouTube Air of Cartage here, back on Total War Warhammer. Wanted to do a little bit of testing tonight on just a couple of things, and before I start off, just again remind you all, there's a little um, watermark of mine, like a logo down in the bottom right-hand corner. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Helps me out a lot. Um, let's jump into here and keep going. Um, so yeah, I wanted to test the flame cannon. It had a couple of tweaks to it in the last one. It got increased range, which must not have been much because its range is still only 180. Which, personally, I think that alone makes this weapon completely unviable. Um, because the dwarfs are frequently going to be rushed. And if a weapon doesn't have enough range to get one or two volleys off at least from a distance, I fail to see how it's going to actually pay for itself. Uh, during the course of a battle, but um, let's let's just see. So I brought a couple of different unit types for the Empire here, um, and if we look at what what did they do to the flame cannon? They reduced the recruitment cost. I did see that, but it's still at 1,400, it's extraordinarily expensive. Um, they increase the range, and then the firing arc allows you to fire over lines, and supposedly it has better armor piercing damage now, but decreased base explosive damage. Um, so I'm going to test these things out. I'm going to put all my infantry on guard mode. I'm going to take these guys off fire at will, and I'm going to target a different kind of unit each. I'm going to target a great sword and a sword with each flame cannon. Just one is well armored, the other is not. And I kind of want to see how much difference uh, in M uh, effect it has, if any. So here comes the first flame volley. Let's just see whether or not the flame gun... Did pretty considerable damage to that sword unit. Let's see how it does against an armored unit. Clean miss from every single gun. The one flame cannon here, though, has taken that sword unit down to half. Finally, a solid hit right there in the great sword. Two solid hits. The weapon does do pretty considerable damage, and it's firing at a decent pace. Protecting it from flying units is going to be thing of difficulty, but I mean, it's it's tearing up a unit of great swords. It's already routed the standard swords. Let's see if I switch my target over here, if we can get another shot off real quick. See how bad we can damage the great sword. I mean, it's, it's got these guys all broken up and damaged considerably. Looks like there is a chance it's going to be landing shots on my own men here. I'm letting it fire from, like, right behind my own men. Let's see if it works. Let's see if I can crossfire right over here. Let's just see what kind of firing arc this thing has. I mean, we did horrible damage. I mean, like, horrible as in, like, a lot of damage to the great swords. Yeah, no, that didn't make a lot of sense, did it? Let's see what the firing arc looks like here. I'm gonna see if I can target this unit of swordsmen. It did hit them. I mean, it did some explosive damage to my own men, but completely wrecked the unit it just hit. Let's target this great sword over here. Now, artillery in general got sped up in terms of its turning radius. Let's see how quickly these can turn around and fire. Turned around fairly quick. Let's see whether or not they can lob a fireball into here. That's actually a pretty nice firing arc. And the fact that this can do work while your men are engaged... Um, I don't know if I'd bring two of these, but... One of them could pay off. Where I would see this useful maybe, maybe against vampires who don't have ranged units or artillery, because the range on these things is so low, I would be concerned about um, enemy, enemy artillery being able to get you from a distance. Um, and if it took out your flame cannon from a distance, there wouldn't be much you could do about it. Because it looks like the fire rate is pretty good, the accuracy is decent. Um, it's anti-infantry, so I don't know how good it would work against cavalry. Let's turn around and see if we can take out the swords before it rejoins the fight. I mean, when it hits, it is just devastatingly brutal. So, I mean, this thing's definitely... I mean, I can see this thing being extremely useful in campaign. Um, borderline useful in the right situation online. It's going to depend. Like I said, you're not going to have... You have to be very careful, like a Great Cannon or a Saigor or something's going to be very dangerous to these because they're short range. So you'd, you'd have to close the distance with your opponent and get into the fight rather quickly. Look at this, this Great Sword coming back into the fight here. Let's see if I can lob some shots down on him. I 
mean, it can lob a shot fairly reliably over your own men, and that, that one hit my own men. But I mean, that was one of the first ones I saw that definitely just landed right on my own men, so I mean, that was fairly reliable, able to lob a shot up and over and down into nearby engaged troops, so I would say that those improvements to the flame cannon are significant. Its price is still pretty extreme, so I wouldn't risk bringing more than one of them since the dwarves are so expensive as is, but an interesting test to be sure. Now, another thing that I wanted to test, let's grab the beastmen. So, Devolve has been um, nerfed, supposedly. Uh, should, yeah, okay, we got Devolve in here. Let's give it a shot. Now, previously, you saw me use it to easily melt six units of great swords. So, let's do a similar test. So, six units of great swords. And um, I've got my Brace Shaman here. Just Malagor the Dark Omen. And let's just stick up a line of defense. Spearman with shield, so we'll go with very weak units. Alright. It's giving the massive advantage to the Empire. Which one would expect, unless Devolve is indeed still OP. It says right there the flame cannon's weak against armor. That's not technically the case anymore. I think that the armor piercing damage on the flame cannon is actually fairly Damn significant. Cool. Um, to the tune of about 70 armor-piercing damage, I think. So, I mean, it's not like the armor-piercing damage of Grimgore Ironhide or something, but it's, it's pretty good armor-piercing damage. Okay, here's Devolve up here, so it's a 9-mana spell. Let's fast-forward. Everything all charging up. Let's see what our recharge, recharge rate's very good right now. Let's see if we are we are not quite in range of devolve. Looks like the area of effect for devolve is smaller. It used to be considerably larger. And it looks like they've decreased the range as well. Because I remember it being able to be launched from much much longer range than this. So let's see what if any damage it does when I am able to cast it. This is a standard cast, not overcast. So here it comes. Now what I would like to see from this spell is if the area effect on it, like if it does some damage but not extreme, it's something that it would be kind of cool if it could be used to help strategically turn a fight in your favor without being redonkulously OP. And right there it looks like, I mean it dealt a little bit of damage, wow, in a 60 second cooldown. I mean I would say that that, I mean, they just nerfed this into the dirt. It went from being overpowered and now it's honestly completely useless in my opinion if that's all it is. Let's rematch and try the overcast version of it. It could also be... The spell was supposed to have some randomness to it. Like, it was supposed to be that the, the enemy had a, a fair chance of avoiding damage. And if that's what happened right there, then that makes sense. So, like, it's a random thing. So, let's run it a couple of times. And I will go ahead and overcast it. Gives an extended duration, but a bigger miscast chance. Okay, let's get ready to cast this. So I'm gonna go ahead and overcast. Uh, I actually didn't miscast it. Extended duration, it's hitting three units. This is the overcast. It's gonna go for quite a while. It's causing fairly minimal damage. Yeah, it wasn't even a quarter of their health. So, I mean, it looks like it was hitting fairly consistent, and again, it's still a 60 second recharge rate, so I mean, if there's a blob of enemy infantry and you cast it on them, it could be helpful in weakening them. Um, so, I mean, but it looks like Devolve has been pretty well nerfed into the dirt, if you ask me. I mean, like I said, it may be able to be used effectively for tactical engagement, but um, I don't think so. I think everybody's just going to leave it at home and keep spawning the Saigor. Yeah, I mean, I just, I don't see it. I mean, it does the minus eight leadership, so actually, yeah, it could still be useful. It does a little bit of damage, so if you have some enemies that where the fight's pretty even, maybe you're about to get a rear charge with some of your units, drop a devolve in there, and yeah, okay, I, I could I could see the usefulness of the spell. 
For 107, though, like I said, I'm not sure if people will bring it, but I, I can see the usefulness of it, and that kind of makes sense from a balancing standpoint. You can tell me what you think, but um, I, I kind of think that, that that would be an okay balance. I'm trying to see what else that they... Slayers got decreased speed, increased melee defense, health, increased armor piercing damage. Grudge Thrower has increased accuracy. Let's check the Grudge Thrower and see if it's a feasible unit. Because it's fairly affordable. Let's get my little artillery test set up here. I mean, at it, only 700, it's slightly better range than the cannon. So, 440 range. Let's grab two of these things. Let's just see what kind of damage we can do to the Great Swords. So, 700. Like I said, fairly fairly cheap for a artillery unit. Just wanted to test a few of these units then other changes that have taken place. Yes, I mean, like I said, it look, looks like Devolve is is gonna be pretty well out of the picture in terms of whether it's still like an insane, OP, egregious sin against balancing. Um, looks like that's no longer the case. Let's drink these guys off fire at will. We're gonna be able to fire right from the start of the battle with these units though, which, I mean, you could fire clear back into the enemy deployment zone here. Let's target both onto a unit of great swords and just kind of see what the reload and accuracy looks like. So here comes the grudge thrower. And we got some hits there. A lot of these guys are getting up. Killed five models there. Four. Yeah, so nine kills in total off the first volley against great swords. Doesn't look to be terribly accurate against like maybe a thin line, but here where the AI is bunched up a little, it's scoring hits and it's getting a fair number of kills for being relatively cheap and long range. I'm trying to think what it would be good against. I mean, if you knew you were going to come up against an infantry heavy army, or honestly, it's armor piercing too, so this could be a pretty useful weapon against chaos. Because of its uh, low cost, you should be able to use it to tear apart some of the uh, chaos infantry before an engagement is the dwarves. Not very accurate though out here on the flank versus this uh, moving target where there's nothing in front of or behind it. Finally scored a hit there. When you do get hits with it, it seems like it does pretty fair damage. Missile damage is only 148, so it's not incredible. Um, would it be worth it as a one-off unit? Probably so. I think because of the range against the right targets, it could definitely be worth it. So that was interesting. Just, I'm going to tab out just real quick and take a look. And let's test maybe one more unit here. Our k has reduced recruitment costs. Chosen have increased melee defense, hit points, and melee attack. Let's test Chosen. We haven't gotten to test them in a while. Now, previously, I want to say that um, Black Orcs traded really nicely versus Chosen. Let us see if that is still the case. So, I'm going to take, let's see, Chosen. Chosen are 1250. Let's get four of them, and I'm just going to take a Chaos Lord and try and, uh, well, actually, we'll have to. We'll try and stay away from the fight as much as we can. Unfortunately, it's. First of all, let's see how Chosen trade against Great Swords, because there is a 300 price point difference here. It says that the balance bar is very much in my favor. We would hope that this type of thing would be a decisive victory for the Chosen, but let's test it out against the Great Swords. The AI is not always the easiest to test against, but we will give it a shot. I'll have to get my friend on here with me to do some testing occasionally. Play. We may not get clean charges off on every great sword. That's my biggest concern. If we can kind of get the AI to give us fairly clean charges, looks like we will. Uh, General's going to intercept this one, so that test probably won't be very valid. On the charge, it's looking pretty even. 
I'm gonna throw my general in here. Let's fast forward and kind of see how these engagements go. So again, Chaos have increased stats, lower cost, and I'm seeing mixed results. I'm seeing that the Chosen do okay in a couple of fights, and I'm seeing them do rather poorly. Like in this fight, they're just doing poorly. The Great Swords appear to be outperforming them. The Chosen also only have 60 units. I mean, the Great Swords are now getting pulled the line, though, too. So, I mean, I'm going to cast all this stuff on my guys since the AI did for theirs. That one gives my guys a lot more melee defense. See how it works out. Let's see if the Chosen hold their ground. If you look right over here, they are barely trading with great swords. And over here, it's a fairly even trade with the great swords also. I did manage to kill the uh, Empire Lord here. Unfortunately, I can't keep the AI from engaging their Lord. I mean, I want to say it looks like from this test, I mean, it's not going to be 100% conclusive, but it, it looks like that Chaos will defeat great swords one to one but it is a pretty tight fight you can see right here these two units have had a pretty clean pounding on each other I've got way more kills with the chosen um, the great swords definitely have fewer kills but they seem to be hanging with my guys fairly well so if the chosen win it it's gonna be mostly just due to uh, armor they do have really nice defense stats pretty good attack. These guys are just armored shielded though, whereas the great swords are armor piercing infantry. So I'm assuming that we would see a better performance from the chosen with great weapons. You can see they're not a particularly impressive performance there from the chosen. Let's concede defeat on that one, because those chosen are quite a bit cheaper than the ones with great weapons. I mean, are they going to be worth it? I I don't know. I mean, that's that's very expensive, but I mean, it is a 120 armor unit. If we go here, armored, armor piercing. You would hope these guys can get about as clean a victory as any unit's ever going to get here. Let's just do this one test. I'd like to test them against black orcs too, but I don't have time tonight. I'm going to do this just one last test here. And again, none of this is meant to be like a definitive answers all kind of thing. This is just supposed to be... Um, running a quick test just to kind of gauge for myself where I think that the um, answer would lie. That doesn't mean we're going to be right every time. So like I said, this is just more, if anything, to, to get a feel for whether or not these guys perform a lot differently than where they used to. And I don't know how they used to perform against Great Swords, but I know that Chosen were pretty generally um, disappointing. I'm not even going to put my lord in here. I'm going to hope that the that great sword didn't charge my unit properly. Over here, we got some pretty solid charges, like head-to-head. -head. So I would hope, again, that we're going to see the chosen with great weapons maul the great swords pretty significantly. Let's take a look. Because the cost difference is significant. It's honestly not a very significant difference. These ones over here that took the charge funky are losing, but that, that was because their charge was somewhat intercepted. These Chaos with great weapons are doing substantially better than their non-great weapon variant, and they are going to win this fight pretty convincingly. Yeah, they've won that pretty convincingly. So I, I would say that Price-wise, that landed right about where it should be. They defeated their opponents with about the right number of men left based on what I've seen on price. So, yeah. I mean, it looks like the, the Chosen with great weapons. Pretty decent performance there. I will come back sometime, though, and test them against uh, Black Orcs. Hope you all enjoyed just these quick tests real quick. Um, tell me what else you'd like to know more about. Discuss in the comments what you think. Again, understand that this is not against a person. Um, I will be doing tests against a person from time to time because I kind of want to get back into the faction-focused videos, but just want to hear your thoughts. I hope you all enjoyed it. Air of Carthage, signing out, and I'll see you next time.